Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today for my talk. I'll be presenting our work in configurable secure cache microarchitecture design for trusted execution environments, which we call Chunks Cache. The last five years have witnessed a growing outbreak of microarchitectural security attacks that have made it to the news and security advisories of the biggest hardware vendors. Spectra and Meltdown are the most popular, but in fact, only a few of these attacks. And these attacks represent a disruptive paradigm shift from the traditional threat model and threat untrusted. For long, the focus has largely been on software-only vulnerabilities, and we always assume trust in the underlying hardware of our computing platforms, which served inherently as the root of trust of our systems. However, these recent microarchitectural attacks have broken these assumptions because they're exploiting issues that don't occur in the software, but actually originate in the microarchitecture and deepen the underlying hardware of our systems, and they're exploited by means of software. And these flaws may be patched by either software or microcode updates to circumvent the underlying issue, while others can't be patched altogether because they require modifications to the underlying hardware. But unlike software, you can't patch the hardware once it's in silicon. These microarchitectural exploits often work by an attacker intelligently encoding sensitive data, such as a private key, through microarchitectural side effects. And these should remain invisible to the software, but the attacker can exploit a channel to leak these side effects to the untrusted software, thus revealing the private key. The most popular way attackers lead these effects to the software is via the timing side channel of caches. In fact, the very reason caches are used to boost performance is how they're exploited. Because caches significantly boost the performance of our modern day processors because processors and closely coupled caches to them are much faster than DRAM accesses to main memory. So when a piece of data is accessed for the first time, it needs to be fetched from DRAM into the cache after it experiences a cache miss. Now, the next time this data is accessed, it's hitting cache, and this results in an orders of magnitude faster memory access. And it is this difference in latency, which is directly observable by the software, of course, this is the timing channel that can be exploited in caches because of their set associative structure and mapping. And in the past decade or so, many different cache attack techniques have been shown by researchers and practitioners, and millions of standard computing platforms based on architectures from Intel, AMD, and ARM have been shown vulnerable to these attacks. In fact, even hardware-assisted security architectures, such as trusted execution environment architectures, have been also compromised by these attacks. One example is Intel SGX. So Intel SGX works by enforcing private regions of memory in RAM for the services protected in isolated components called enclaves. And this is achieved by encrypting the contents of these enclaves in memory and thus protecting them from any process that is outside the enclave itself. But this enclave memory is decrypted once it's in the CPU for execution, and it makes use of the CPU caches the same way the other enclaves and non-protected apps use it. So essentially, once it's in cache, there is no isolation anymore among the different enclaves. And because caches are actually a shared resource, competition can occur among the enclaves and apps for the cache capacity. So the cache line of a malicious adversary enclave can be evicted in favor of a cache line from a victim enclave. And this can be observed by the adversary, and it can be used to infer sensitive data, such as a private key or even the control flow of the execution. And although these attacks are out of the official threat scope covered by industrial solutions, such as Intel's SGX and ARM's Trust Zone, they nevertheless bypass their hardware protection mechanisms, and they break their security guarantees, which renders the entire architecture then useless for its design purpose. So this requires that we take a step back, basically, and we rethink our process or microarchitecture design from the ground up, more particularly for security architectures. And in this work, we look into caches and we propose chunked cache as a last level cache for TE architectures. So chunked cache in a nutshell enables strict cache partitioning among this trusting code by carving out a chunk of the cache dedicated for, for each isolated execution context. However, this is only activated when it is required by this particular isolated execution context. Otherwise, this cache resource is shared and the same performance and flexibility is preserved. So side channel resilient cache defenses that have been proposed to date can be classified into either randomization based approaches or partitioning based approaches. Recently proposed randomization-based defenses are probabilistic in their security guarantees. Every defense was basically followed by an attack technique to break it, which was followed by another attack, a stronger defense, which then was followed by an alternative attack technique, and so on in an incremental race. And this reveals how randomization-based approaches will not cut it for secure cache design for computing platforms because they do not tackle the fundamental problem, 
especially where you need solid future-proof security guarantees. Strict partitioning, on the other hand, offer well-grounded and solid security guarantees, but the existing defenses are currently not too flexible, they're not fine-grained, and they do not easily scale to support a large number of protection domains and to also su support shared memory. And so with all of this in mind, we aim to design a construction that selectively enforces clean and strict cache partitioning across different execution domains in TE architectures, but only when the execution domain also requires a side channel resilience. And because it would be based on strict partitioning, it would block all side channel leakage deterministically, including the cache occupancy channel that recent works are vulnerable to. We require that our design has built-in mechanisms to calibrate the performance security trade-off and to optimize for improved performance if it is required by a particular domain. Lastly, we also want our design to allow support for shared memory and shared cache lines since this would be required for domains that want to utilize operating system services. For chunk cache, we assume a computing system with a typical TE security architecture where security critical code is already isolated into uniquely identified components, which we call isolation domains. And usually this trusting code is naturally allocated to different domains. And also in line with TEs, we assume a strong adversary where the highest privileged kernel or hypervisor is untrusted and can mount these attacks. Only the security monitor of the TE is trusted. We take into account and we mitigate access-based, contention-based, and even cache occupancy-based attacks. Typically, denial of service and physical attacks are kept out of scope. So this shows how a typical computing system which implements a TE architecture would look like. And we describe next how chunked cache works as the last level cache of such a platform. This shows here a small eight-way set associative cache with 16 sets. The sets are identified here by their global set IDs from 0 to 15. Each execution domain in these security architectures is defined and identified uniquely. Usually the operating system and all workloads which do not require protection are then combined in the non-isolated domain and they're assigned an ID of zero by default. And every domain that requires side channel resilience gets to request its dedicated chunk of the capacity it requires. So here ID one just requested that it gets its own chunk of four sets. So sets eight to 11 were allocated to the domain and mapped to the chunk IDs zero to three for this domain. Similarly, domain two now just got allocated its own chunk of four sets from sets 12 to 15. So this is essentially carving out the cache resource for each domain exclusively and unshared. And so besides guaranteeing side channel resilience that way, this also allows that each isolated domain acquires the performance that corresponds to the cache capacity that it has requested without any competition from other workloads. And in contrast to typical partitioning schemes, such as way-based partitioning schemes that provide each domain with only one or two ways within each set of the full cache structure and cannot scale beyond a number of protection domains, chunk cache provides strict partitioning but does it more flexibly and scalably. The non-isolated domain is also allocated a cache chunk of generous capacity, and this is hardwired. It always belongs to the non-isolated domain, but it should also be able to utilize all free cache sets, which are not allocated yet to any domain. So intuitively, these sets should not be wasted unutilized until they get allocated. We call these the mainstream cache sets. These are used by the non-isolated domain and by any domain that does not require side channel resilience. Now, designing and realizing this cache construction raises some non-trivial challenges. We require mechanisms to allow each domain to independently select its mode of cache utilization. Does it require its, uh, its exclusive chunk capacity as well as its shared memory settings if it wants to use the OS services, for example? And allowing that each domain has a differently sized cache requires that we track and manage this metadata for each domain. The mapping of addresses to sets is configured for each domain independently because each domain now has a different number of sets in its chunk. And one of the most critical challenges is preserving the performance of the operating system and its services because the OS can never be starved of cache resources that it requires or have its performance impacted because of this construction. Generally speaking, all execution domains should always be guaranteed at least a minimum cache capacity. A domain can request more cache if that is required and the resources are available in order to boost performance, but a minimum capacity must always be available for every domain. We describe next how we tackle the most significant of these challenges. So each domain can independently configure how it requires its cache and shared memory settings. So when a domain is set up, it configures whether it requires side channel resilience. If this is not required, then the domain is configured in the mainstream cache mode. 
and so the domain gets to utilize the mainstream cache sets that is shared with the non-isolated domain on the operating system. When the, non, when the mainstream cache sets are shared with the OS and other domain, the OS is not permitted to access these, the domain's cache line still. If the domain requires side channel resilience, then exclusive cache mode is configured, where the domain requests its exclusive chunk of cache capacity, uh, inclusive, and it defines the capacity of this chunk. In other words, how many sets does it want in this chunk? The domain can configure if it also requires to share memory with the operating system and can specify the corresponding memory regions. So memory lines from these regions would be cached in the mainstream cache and the corresponding cache lines would be accessed by both the domain itself as well as the operating system. Of course, this requires that the developer configures these settings for the workload and determines what's sensitive and what's not and what requires side channel resilience and what doesn't, which is typically the case for TE architectures anyway. In order to support these features, the cache tag store needs to be extended as well as the incoming cache access request. So for every cache line stored, its owner domain ID should be stored in the tag store. This validates that only the owner domain accesses its respective cache lines if the mainstream cache is being shared with the operating system and other workload. And also in order to support shared memory as well, one additional bit is required to tag cache lines that can be shared with the operating system. And every incoming cache access request is now also extended with the domain ID that issued the request in order to check it against the owner ID of the cache line to validate the access. Additionally, whether it's also an access to a shared memory region is also indicated because the cache controller then can handle it accordingly. Because each domain is allocated a chunk of cache with a different number of sets, the number of address bits that are used to map the memory address to the correct set is not fixed anymore. It needs to be configured for every domain independently, depending on the size of its cache. So the cache controller has to be extended with additional logic and finite state machines that would control the cache allocation operations whenever a new domain is set up. It also takes care of deallocation whenever a domain is torn down, and it manages every cache access correctly for each domain. And to support these cache management operations, additional table structures are also required by the cache controller. These table structures are in fact the most significant contributor to the hardware overhead of chunked cache. A cache set status table is required to store whether every global cache set is already allocated to a domain or is available in the mainstream cache and free for allocation. Another table keeps track of the chunks allocated to the domains. The domain cache allocation table stores the vector of global set IDs that are allocated to each domain, along with the number of index bits that are used to map its memory lines to the corresponding set. One of the most significant challenges in designing chunk cache is managing the operating system's utilization of cache. Until additional domains are set up and acquire cache, the operating system should be able to utilize all the available cache capacity by default. And when new domains are set up, the OS should not lose all the memory lines it already cached in because its chunk size was modified. And so to overcome this problem, we designed chunked cache such that the operating system is allocated a fixed and generously large number of cache sets which remain always dedicated to the operating system, while still letting it utilize the other cache sets so long as they are unallocated. So in this simplified example, a fixed number of eight sets from zero to seven are allocated to the operating system here, and these constitute its principal cache chunk. These eight sets, always available for the OS, they can never get taken away from it or torn away for another domain. And so the memory addresses, memory address indexing and the number of index bits that are used to do the mapping for the operating system cache line accesses do not change at runtime. However, the operating system can still also utilize unallocated sets 12 to 15 in parallel until they get allocated to another domain. And this works by indexing the cache sets in parallel, which are congruent to the set to which a memory address is mapped. So for example, if the index bits map a memory line to set four, then the congruent set 12 can also be utilized by the operating system to cache that memory line. But if a memory line is mapped to set one, the congruent set would be set nine, but this is already allocated to domain one, so it is not available for the operating system to use. For the sake of time, I will not go into the security analysis, but it's worth pointing out that because chunked cache is based on strict partitioning, unlike randomization-based defenses, it becomes straightforward to reason about its security guarantees and the cache attacks it mitigates.
We've evaluated chunked cache for its hardware overhead on an RTL implementation model on a RISC-V processor. The hardware model is also used to estimate the cycle latencies which are required for the modified cache management and access operations. And we integrate these latencies into an architectural cycle accurate implementation of chunked cache on Gen5 when running it for large mixed workloads from the SPEC CPU 2017 benchmarks to estimate the performance impact. Our experiments show how chunked cache outperforms web-based partitioning and does not adverse impact the performance of the operating system and can be used to optimize the performance of individual workloads by calibrating the chunk capacity. So please check our paper out for more details and I'm also happy to discuss the evaluation results in more detail in the Q&A. So to wrap up, we believe that a new design paradigm for hardware and microarchitecture has become necessary that takes security as a key metric into account, especially for trusted computing platforms. Otherwise, microarchitectural flaws can break their security promises entirely. And one key microarchitectural source of side channel leakage are shared caches. And we look in this work more closely into caches and we propose an on demand side channel resilient cache microarchitecture for trusted execution environment security architectures. And this lets each execution domain to carve out the cache it desires of the capacity it desires or to disable isolation altogether and use mainstream cache resources. We designed this while taking into account the performance of the OS and we show how we can achieve this need security performance calibration with reasonable overheads. For future research, we want to look into how the storage overheads of chunked cache can be reduced to enable further scaling. One idea is to group congruent sets and map these instead of individual sets to domains. Thank you everyone for your attention and time and I'm happy to receive and answer all your questions.